AutoCube is a Chinese tech brand that I have looked forward to on checking out their products. They are one of the better brands when it comes to making great value tech products and I'm super hyped to have received the AutoCube X Game tablet for review because this is an excellent 10-inch tablet that runs Android 11 and costs under a thousand ringgit. Even though it doesn't come with flagship specs, it performs way better than many other Android tablets of the same class. So here's my review. The AudioCube X game is marketed as a gaming tablet, but to be honest, it is far from one in terms of specs. It is powered by a 3-year-old MediaTek P90 SoC along with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which works very well for work, web browsing, and media consumption that you shouldn't experience any performance issues. But it lacks graphics power to drive even old games like Asphalt 9, let alone graphics-heavy games like Genshin. But let's face it, this is a budget tablet which you shouldn't expect to do gaming as good as a tablet that costs two or three times its cost. However, there are several things that it does better than its competition. First, the tablet has a sleek aluminum build that feels great to hold with smooth rounded corners and weighs about 530 grams, which most of its competition usually comes with plastic build and poor aesthetics. The tablet also has a connector on the back just like the iPad Air that powers its proprietary keyboard case, which AutoCube sells separately that I find it to be a worthy purchase if you are thinking to work on this tablet. The keyboard offers great tactile which I enjoy writing as the alphabet keycaps are big enough for my fingers. I wish it is backlit so I can work in the dark, but I'm not going to complain here due to its affordable price. The tablet's display measures at 10.5 inches and has a 1920 by 1280 resolution that refreshes at 60 Hz. This is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio that gives you extra vertical space when used in landscape, which is good for reading web pages and documents. Even when you hold the tablet in portrait, you wouldn't find it awkward as compared to a 16 by 9 display. The bezels are reasonably slim which provides sufficient space for your palm so you wouldn't accidentally touch the screen. It also supports 4096 levels of pressure which AutoCube sells an active stylus for that. But on top of that, I highly commend the image quality of the display because it is an IPS panel so colors, contrast, viewing angles are really good which totally beats a TFT LCD display. AutoCube is also kind enough to pre-apply a screen protector and includes an extra piece in the box if you want to replace it in the future. The quad speakers on the AutoCube X game sounds acceptable for its class. It can get loud with no distortion at maximum volume but lacks bass. What I do find disappointing is the lack of a headphone jack. Although AudioCube is kind enough to provide a USB-C audio dongle inside the box, that's still an inconvenience for those who prefer wired audio. Here's a sound test on the loudspeakers. The AudioCube X game ships with Android 11, and AudioCube has fortunately not included Gloat or a terrible launcher. It doesn't have Widevine L1 certification, so you can't watch Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in HD. The software experience is close to vanilla Android and feels very lightweight. There are several things that I like about the software, and one of them is the split screen feature. I know this is quite a common feature on Android devices, but I like that when I'm working on an active app, it darkens the others so I can stay focused. There's also an e-reader mode that turns the screen into monochrome for a comfortable reading experience, a child mode that limits apps and usage time if you want to hand the tablet to your kids, and a game mode that blocks incoming notifications if you want to stay focused on playing Candy Crush. The AudioCube X game is a 4G tablet that accepts two nano SIMs and can make and receive phone calls. This is a very convenient feature that I appreciate on tablets as I'm always working outside of home and office. I'm using a data SIM on the tablet during the review period and connectivity is so far stable. And to some folks out there, the tablet can support WhatsApp which I think is super useful if you want to use it for business instead of a smartphone. The tablet has a rear single 8 megapixel and front facing 5 megapixel camera that takes videos at full HD resolution. Image quality at both cameras is fine for video calls and casual photos in good lighting, though it certainly falls short when you compare it to a mid range phone. Battery life is excellent on the AudioCube X game with a 7400 mAh battery. I can easily do 7 hours of screen on time in a single day and only need to charge the next day. It also has a reasonable 18 watt charging speed which will take around 2 hours to charge up to 100% from single digit battery levels. 
The Altium Keep X Game is a very decent tablet for media consumption and work that retails from 975 ringgit or around US $220 at this time of shooting and costs up to 1200 ringgit or $280 if you bundle the keyboard and stylus. Which I think is very reasonable and it offers so much more than any other Android tablets of the same price range. Furthermore, this is one of the few Chinese tablet brands that can be found at some local dealers so you don't need to worry about after sale support if you have any issues. The link to purchase the tablet is down in the description. So that's all for my review of the AudioCube X game and I look forward to more tablets like this from the brand in the near future. So that's all for today's video, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming right up on the channel and stay subscribed. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you guys in our next one.